Josh. Welcome to the Now. I'm Ashley. And I'm Gus. Has Google been stealing the private information of iPhone users? Is the company whose motto used to be, don't be evil, finally gone over to the dark side? Well, that's what one lawsuit on behalf of millions of people is claiming, and if it's successful, it could have big ramifications for the internet giant who might owe residents of the UK quite a bit of money. Yeah. The lawsuit involves Google's data collection practices, specifically how they relate to the iPhone. According to the class action suit that says it's seeking compensation for 5.4 million people in the UK, a lot of which is the equivalent of like 7 million people in the US, right? Like the exchange yeah. rate? Yeah. Pounds to dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, Google collected person, I'm sorry, I had to say it. Google collected the personal information by bypassing the default privacy settings on the iPhone between June 2011 and February 2012. On its website, the group, which calls itself Google You Owe Us, keeping it real succinct, says that Google placed a piece of code onto iPhones using its Google Plus service that bypassed Safari's default privacy settings and set a Google third-party cookie onto your iPhone. That allowed Google to track browsing data and collect personal data like browsing history without permission. That group says that Google then used that data to sell a service to its ad network called the Double Click Service, which uses you guessed it, browsing data to help advertisers target users. It's kind of like what Google does a lot yeah. of times. In a tweet, the group advertises the lawsuit and encourages those affected to join the class action. It says, we believe Google illegally took iPhone users' data in 2011 and 2012. We are taking them to court. Consumer advocate Richard Lloyd, who is leading the case, said he wanted to send a strong message to Google and other tech giants in Silicon Valley that we're not afraid to fight back if our laws are broken. He told the Guardian newspaper that the case is the first of its kind in the UK against a major tech company for misusing our valuable personal data. Lloyd said their actions have affected millions and will be asking the courts to remedy this major breach of trust. Now, the group apparently arrived at the 5.4 million number uh, by determining that's how many adults in the UK used iPhones during the period of time in question. Can't they just ask Google, hey, how many people did you track? <laughs> uh, and they if, could. And if Google loses, they could have to pay customers several hundred pounds each. That's a lot of money. Each. That really adds up, even for a giant company like Google. You know, even at a round number like 100 pounds, we're talking at 500 million. That's a lot. And if it goes up from there, it could be billions. Uh, of course, to us, that sounds like a lot, but the group estimates that Google made $80 billion from advertising last year, so... I think they've got it in their wallet. Yeah, what would it be like to just say, all right, fine, take a billion. It, it's not worth it to have this lawsuit. <sighs> Here's a billion dollars. Uh, for its part though, Google did say in a statement they don't think the lawsuit has any merit and they are gonna contest it. They do still want that no, billion. No, I, I, it's a joke, right? Obviously yeah. they want their they billion want dollars. They want the billion. And maybe they, in their mind they didn't do anything wrong, but we'll see. Yeah, uh, well. This, well, we'll see. <laughs> this isn't the first time that Google has been sued over this exact issue. In 2013, it had to pay $17 million in a suit brought by 37 U.S. states and the District of Columbia over the same issue. So it's the same issue. That's a much smaller number, though, than what they could be looking at in the U.K. And it doesn't stop there, because a year before that, it was hit with a $22.5 million fine from the U.S. Federal Trade Commission, again, over the same issue. So there's kind of a precedent here. Uh, Google also has had a very long history of getting fined by the EU over its practices. Uh, although, it just does... EU still apply to the Yes, UK? They, they have not left they yet. haven't actually they have left. Not left. Yeah, right. Uh, earlier this year, a data protection commission in Spain fined Google 300,000 euros for a case involving its processing of user data that it gathered through the Street View mapping service. And in June, the European Commission hit Google with an antitrust penalty of 2.4 billion euros, saying that it adjusted search results to the detriment of smaller shopping search services. Of course, Google, not the only tech giant that's gotten in trouble over privacy concerns and the use of cookies, especially in the EU, where there have long been concerns over the issue. Facebook was fined uh, the equivalent of $178,000 by regulators in France recently for tracking users illegally through cookies. Damn cookies. They're just everywhere. <laughs> More... The cookie monster was the real hero. Yeah. More recently, Google's home mini personal assistant units drew an outcry over privacy concerns when it was discovered that the web connected speakers were listening to what their owners were saying. Is that what you want? Well, I mean, it is. For? It is. But the idea is that it was transmitting transmitting data back without mm. necessarily having the the wake up words. I see. So, and then that information was being used to target ads at people. Well, so I, there was. Uh, I remember there was an interesting discussion about it. Came up. Uh, Might have come up on Reddit, and this was a, a little while ago, where uh, someone started talking about like 
babies or something that they w would never talk about it. They did this as an experiment and suddenly started getting all these ads for babies. Mm. They just talked about it around this home assistant. So it was kind of a, a weird thing. Well, I, but guess, I guess the way that this incident surfaced is that the tech site Android police discovered that the devices were recording what their owners were saying at all times, despite assurances that they only listened to you after hearing activation words like, are we really gonna say it? Or okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one reviewer actually reported as well that the device was transmitting his words back to Google, which had stored pretty much everything going on around my home mini. So yeah, it's a worry. Yeah, that's 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 not cool. Google at the time made a fix to the software, but the company insisted that the glitch affected a small number of Google Home Minis, specifically those that were given out to journalists and others at company events, and insisted that consumer models didn't have the same issue. Yikes. Um, Glitch, please. <laughs> so yeah, not the first time that Google and uh, privacy have had a tough time with each other. And it's definitely gonna become more and more of an issue as more devices are connected to the internet. You get these smart homes with their smart hubs that are designed to listen to They're you. not so smart in the end. Yeah. Uh, here's another scary example. Recently, Mattel right. said it was canceling plans for a baby monitor called Aristotle that had a Wi-Fi camera, microphone speaker, and a lighting system that could automatically dim the lights in a child's room. Okay. Oh, and the device was designed to keep learning about children as they grow up, and officials said it would eventually be able to help kids with their homework. Uh, that, uh, that prompted some concern for consumer advocates, and Mattel finally said that it was scrapping the idea. Which is kind of a shame, because I think this is how we would have gotten straight into, like, uh, Neil Stevenson's, like, the Diamond Age territory. <laughs> Uh, anyway, earlier this year, Disney was sued after claims that some of its apps uh, directed at kids, stuff like, you know, Disney Princess Palace Pets, were collecting the personal information of children, also a really big no-no, mm -hmm. uh, and sharing it with advertisers, really, really big no-no, without parental consent, really, really, really big no-no. Yeah, bad. So Google's not the only company who's been accused of privacy violations, but given its size and reach, it definitely draws a lot of attention. Uh, as for the iPhones, it's not clear when exactly the Safari browsing issue uh, feature <laughs> was fixed, but in 2015, Apple started letting iPhone and iPad users install content blockers on their phones, which can also block ads on websites. Not clear if it was done as a response to Google, but the companies have a pretty long history of this sort of tit for tat fighting, especially when it comes to smartphones. Apple does not want to be sharing their user data with their competition, which well, is Google. they do if they're paid for it. Well, yeah, yeah, you gotta pay him first. Right, we'll see how this case shakes out, but it definitely looks like Google could have to pay a lot of people a lot of money, especially if history is any indicator on the issue. You having those precedents? Bad. Not on Google's side. Uh, what do you think of Google being sued by pretty much everyone in the UK? Let us know in the comments. And for all your Google news, be sure to like this video, and if you're new around here, subscribe to The Know. Google collected the personal information by passing... In a tweet, the group uh, says... Oh. Saying that it adjusted search results to... More recently, Google's Home Mini Personal, <laughs> I've said that all fucked up. There used to be like a plugin you could download on your computer called Cookie Monster that would and eat your cookies. Nom, 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 nom. Yeah. Um, more recently, Google's